Welcome to Peter and Ruffy's Football Show, your daily fix of football chat on STV. Uh, the main talking points tonight, Celtic are in Turkey for their dead rubber against Fenerbahce in the Europa League. Stevie Naismith says he'll have to wait his turn at Everton. Jamie Walker and Graham Cummins sign contract extensions at their respective clubs. Uh, we'll also look ahead to tonight's Champions League football and discuss Brian McClare's comments saying there's no easy or quick solution to to youth development. Alan Ruff is alongside me, Peter Martin, and we're joined by the writing legend, Hugh MacDonald. It's the only way to sum him up. So, uh, Scott MacDonald mentioned there's no such a thing as uh, a meaningless match for Celtic. I think uh, there <laughs> I is. I beg to differ. <laughs> I beg to differ, Scott. And I think the only thing about this game is it's just bad news for Celtic. Because if, 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 if Ronnie Dyla and his team win this match, everybody will say, the first thing they'll say, because I've done that a wee bit earlier, yeah. and if he gets beat, again, it just adds to the sense of war that surrounded Celtic in Europe, so it really is a game they could do without. I agree with John Collins on that the other day. Yeah, Commons and uh, Forrest travelling with the squad, and of course you mentioned John Collins there, uh, the question undoubtedly about near beaton. Uh, this one was like a ping pong ball over the last 48 mm -hmm. hours, Ruffy uh, wants to go, mm -hmm. going nowhere, signed a five year deal, then of course you know, would you agree he's a £10 million man, and John Collins says yes, he's definitely a £10 million man and he signed a contract extension. I, I have to say, you know, at some stages it all looks a wee bit too orchestrated mm -hmm. here. He's now a £10 mm -hmm. million pound man and just setting it nicely for the summer when somebody mm -hmm. comes in with a bid. Yeah, they're obviously looking for the outside. It looks as if the agent's uh, the one that's causing the trouble. You know, I think he's probably been, maybe knows a club that's looking for a player and he's put two and two together. I've got an eight, I've got a player in my books that just fits the bill. And he's obviously dropped it into the player and everybody seemingly wants to mm -hmm. play in England. Is he a £10 million player? I don't think so. I think you're talking around about £6 million, something like that, mm -hmm. five or six. But they're going on the assumption that other players have went for more than that. So I just don't see. I know he's had a good, a reasonably good European campaign, but I don't see him as a, a match-winning midfield player. Yeah, forgive me for being a cynic on this one, Hugh. I don't see it as the agent causing trouble. I see it basically as Celtic are quite happy to get him on a five-year deal. Good bit of business. And if the agent can find him a club for £10 million, thank you very much. I think so, and I think Celtic are quite... I mean, if you read between the lines and in the books and in the, the business perspectives, basically the two glory things for Celtic for their accountants every year is one, Champions League qualification, and B, sell a player every year. Every year they've got to sell a marquee player. That's just a fact. History shows that. If you look at that squad at the moment, who would you be? Who would you be selling? I think I think Beatong's honestly uh, standing on a pedestal himself as well. But I think Rodjick's a good player and he'll come through. I think Lustig without the injuries would be good. But if you're going to sell a player next summer, who would you be looking at? Dear Beatong. Yeah. Okay. Is this a, a case of maybe some of the younger players getting a chance of Scott Allen to shine against Fenerbahce Ruffian? How do you see it going? Uh, I think they will be up against it. Uh, I think we Fenerbahce really want a win. Uh, it's always a bad sign when the home team need it, and uh, it'll be a great atmosphere in the stadium. It'd be great to see Scott Allen. I'd, I'd like to see what he can do. Uh, it's a shame that he's been thrown in at the deep end on an away game. You know, but I'd rather see him getting 90 minutes at home when uh, they're pressing the game. But certainly, it's going to be a big, big night. And it's again, as, as Hugh just touched on it briefly, there, Ronnie Dale can't afford a heavy. Defeat. No, another thing that was uh, curious uh, from uh, the quick questions to John Collins mm. at the airport, uh, you know, he admitted that they're keeping tabs on Aston Villa's uh, Libor mm. Kozak. Kozak. Yeah. Very unusual for a, a, an assistant or even a manager mm. uh, to comment on transfer targets. They usually wouldn't open their mouth on it. I know, but John has got this ability, you know, just to, to, to speak, shall we say, quite openly at times. I mean, we know the, you know, we know the, the trouble that the, you know, Scottish football teams don't test us enough, etc., etc. So he's got a wee bit of history just throwing the press a press aside, and it, uh, it was a line that's been bubbling for a while because we didn't know that they, they were interested in that. Aston Villa centre forward and we did know his contract ends out, uh, runs out next year with Villa as well yeah. so it's, it's an opportunity to get him in and loan at Christmas with a view to, with a view to buying him. I'm just wondering how busy Celtic need to be at Christmas 
they're not going to have any uh, revenue from Christmas to me, bar from the Scottish Cup, because yeah. there's not going to be any Europe. If Aberdeen were still on their heels, you'd be saying, well, maybe need to beef up a wee bit, but I really don't know how, how, how much they need to spend. Two players maximum, huge, but centre half and a striker. And even at that, would they really need them? If they didn't get anybody at Christmas, would they really need them? Nah, that's what I think. I think I, I agree with you, it'll be minimal, a minimal uh, transfer window. Yeah, um, OK, uh, let's switch our attention to clubs that are uh, making sure that they keep their players um, at the club on long-term deals. Hearts have been really busy making sure that they've got a good foundation of players in there. Jamie Walker, the latest. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've been impressed mm -hmm. by uh, Jamie Walker on countless occasions, Ruffy. He's had a few injury problems here and there, but they've got him on a contract extension. And St Johnson have done the same with Graham yeah, I think it's, I think it's really, it, you know, one of the things like old style football looks at these deals and said, well, that's them signed up for five years and never leaving the club for five years. Yeah. You and I know it's not. What they've done <laughs> is they've, they've said to us, well, we've signed you up and then we can decide when and if we sell them. Yeah. I think Walker is, shows tremendous promise and, you know, and, and could go further in the game. I think he's not alone at Tynecastle in that because yeah. I think Sam Nicholson's a fine mm -hmm. player as well and I think he could go on as well. So there's a few there, but I think the, the, and the, the, the big fullback as well, Patterson, who can play centre uh, defence. So they've, they've had a strategy, get them in long term deals. And we will decide when you go. Yep. Um, Stephen Aismith was out and about today talking, of course, um, I've got great admiration and respect for him because Ruffy does a lot of work for charity yeah. down south uh, uh, and up here as well uh, with the Loaves and the Fishes campaign. He, he was out today promoting that. Um, <coughs> let's hear from him, first of all, talking about the fact that he's kicking his heels on the bench at Everton. Play some of the most attractive football in the league, but then on the other side, you, you're frustrated that you, you can't get into the team. Um, but it's, it's a fantastic squad to be around, and um, as long as this good run goes, I'm probably going to need to get used to being on the bench and not having much game time. But um, on the other hand, if we keep winning that, it's, it's great to watch. Yep, Lukaku mm. keeps scoring goals, so he has to <laughs> wait and watch it. It might uh, enjoy winning, but certainly doesn't enjoy not playing. No, and all top class football players are desperate to play. You know, this sitting, you know, this idea that, you, that Stokes was accused of just sitting on the bench picking up your money, and you complain. They want to get out and play. They're desperate to play, and he is. He's a classic example of that. But all along that team, he's out. Lukaku's playing so well at you know at point, and then the three guys in the middle, he can't even play right because De La Fuel is playing fantastic. He can't play at 10 because Bartley's doing it. He can't play the second striker because Coney's playing brilliantly. He's just, he's just on to plums, as we say, in the, in the, in the UEFA Pro Licence. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, isn't it great that you get to hear some things you haven't heard since you were in the schoolyard um, from Hugh? He always brings out Topper onto plums. <laughs> <laughs> These are classics, Hugh. You don't, listen, don't, you don't get, get them that. anywhere else. No, he just brings just, them just, back. Just, 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 brilliant golden nuggets from days gone by, aren't they, Ruffy? Yeah, I'm just quite happy he uses words that I understand. <laughs> Plum can get these other big uh, words that you came up with. Uh, I struggle with. Yeah, uh, don't worry about that. Listen, we'll, we will fit them in somewhere mm -hmm. and make it a signing from a Greek club, Ruffy, the ones <laughs> that you don't understand. Um, uh, so, uh, over and above that, uh, Stephen A. Smith did, of course, mention he, he's one of those players that wants to play on for Scotland, mm -hmm. wants to try and qualify for maybe the World Cup because right now it's difficult in that dressing room with all his mates teasing mm -hmm. him about qualifying for Euro 2016. And it's frustrating that we are not um, when we felt we, we had as good a squad, um, but they, they've all managed to do it and it's something that got to drive us in the future. We've competed against these teams and uh, and we've, we've held our own, um, so I think going forward we'll definitely be, we'll be confident going into them. Yeah, you never had that problem, Ruffy, mm. going into a dressing room and saying you hadn't qualified for a tournament, did you? No, no, not for the, the 12 years anyway that I was there. <laughs> <laughs> he said uh, modestly. We uh, <laughs> uh, certainly know the, the person he's talking about will be one, Aidan McGeady, uh, uh, yes. who will be, uh, has a, he always has a wee bit of banter within mm. that dressing room, so he'll be one that he'll have to come up with most mornings. Yeah, um, I'm just going to, this is an interesting one, Hugh, just mm. a, a quick one on this. The, the former SPFL Chief Executive, Roger Mitchell, he says, 
Rangers will come to regret mm -hmm. the return of Dave King. I wonder why he would get involved in just putting his head above the parapet with that. We'd be as well just waiting mm -hmm. uh, for things to unfold at Rangers rather than you know making statements like that that clearly bring out the, the unhinged on social media to have a go at him. Yeah, it was an interesting one. I, I, it was one of those ones that we've seen the trade that you know is coughed up. You know, you don't. Yeah. Uh, he just arrives unbidden on your lap. That story. Uh, he's very, shall we say, accessible, Roger. You know, for a quote and all this. But I, I, I wonder. I, I wonder just what the, the underlying motive behind that is. Um, I think. We all know, anybody that says how they know this Rangers story is going to play out and if it's going to be a happy ending or not, it knows better than me. Yep, absolutely. Okay, there's more to talk about, including Brian McClare next. Welcome back to Peter and Ruffy's football show. Alan Ruff is alongside me, Peter Martin and Hugh McDonald of The Herald and uh, numerous other uh, media outlets is here with us <laughs> and we're delighted to have him now that he can fit us into his schedule. Um, Hugh, great to have you uh, talking about football issues and lots of mm. them in this one. I'm trying to get through as quickly as possible. Uh, Brian McClare was talking, of course, this convention. Mm. Uh, those and such are, as those invited to listen to mm. uh, an Iceland party on the way ahead mm -hmm. and obviously Gordon Strachan and Brian McClare offered uh, their tuppence worth as well no easy solutions to improving youth development in Scotland mm -hmm. it could be um, you know a long affair mm -hmm. we've heard that before mm -hmm. um, again there's a couple of things here from the Icelandic point of view on this they've got seven indoor facilities mm -hmm. 23 artificial pitches 12 indoor half size mm -hmm. arenas uh, and of course obviously qualified coaches coaching the four to six year olds mm -hmm. um, um, and I think Gordon Strachan and Brian McClay are certainly looking at some of the aspects of maybe what Iceland has done and hope to implement that with us. Yeah, and I think it's a smart move to look at a successful strategy and, and, and try and take the best out of it. But again, we've talked about this before, you know, it, it doesn't guarantee that it'll work. You know, I mean, we went down... We're halfway down the Holland route at the moment, you know, under the, the water proposals, and we just suddenly see Holland going out the Euros, you know, go, yeah. oh, oops, is this the best way to go? I think there's got to be a way, a more sort of wide-ranging approach that we'll look at the best from all over and see how it fits into our systems. And one of the things is, is the coaching structure because there's a huge debate in this. Do we coach too much or do we coach too little? It's yeah. a huge debate on that. But the point, and, and I'm glad Gordon Strachan is the national manager, believe mm. me on this one, because um, you know he, he said something yesterday that Tommy Burns used to say mm. uh, to me, you know, with regards mm. to Lennox Town, he said, you know, bricks and mortar don't make great players. Mm. Yep. Um, you know, and, and Gordon Strachan says facility doesn't guarantee you, you know, good players. And he also, it's the ability to touch the ball and beat people under pressure that makes a footballer. We must mm. give them back uh, schools football and more games. And he also touched on the fact that to become as good a player as Gordon Strachan was, mm. You know, he'd hit the ball off the wall a thousand times and exactly. work on his touch. It's all, you know, practice your skills, practice again. And there's also the intangible, mm -hmm. Peter, of this thing like, we were talking, you know, listening to Stephen Naismith there and, and, and we were talking about Aidan McGeady and, 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 and I know both of them. And what they've got and any footballer I've known has got is this real mental toughness. I mean, they might, you know, Naismith's sitting there, you know, having charitable dinners and give money but he's as hard as nails when it comes to, to doing it and putting the hours in and having that will and where you get that from is internally you can get all the coaching, all the hours hitting balls against the wall, all the trips with daddy taking you to the, the training sessions and picking you up afterwards but that will's got to be there I, I think we'd try and find a way to get more people to play football. Uh, I, I know there are other things out there to, for the kids to do, but if we could get them back playing football uh, and give them the facility thing you've touched on it, I think the more people playing football, the better chance you've got more people coming through. Yep. Um, over and above uh, that, Hugh, I was interested in uh, the chat over some of the changes um, mm -hmm. that have been proposed. Uh, what do you make of the two-week winter break? Long enough for you? Uh, quite a few people have said that's not a winter break. That's like a that's like an international break. What's going to happen when you have the two-week winter break is uh, there's going to be a run in suntan lotion at Boots. And, uh, because it's going to be a great, it's going to be a great one. And I said, why are we breaking off when the weather's good? Whatever. I think two weeks is fine. <coughs> I think two weeks is fine. It gives a nice little 
stop to this, the season and a start again. Yeah. I mean, I'm all for a break when the, when the weather's bad. We've talked long and hard about the amount of times we've been sitting watching football and getting paid to sit and watch it and yeah. be freezing and miserable. Imagine the poor punter has got to put his frozen mitt in his pocket. Yeah, can I ask you, have you been nobbled in any way over the last week or so? Have mm. you had lunch with anybody who maybe put this proposal together? I'm just a cynic. I just, I just want to know. No, in fact, no. I think I've had, <laughs> the way I'm feeling, I think I've had lunch with just about everybody else, but that. But I actually see with the, I, I've read the proposals, and you know what? I think the League Cup is, has been a sort of like, and, and the whole of Scottish football has been sitting in a sort of kind of torpor at the moment. It needs to be kicked out of it. And I'm, I'm thinking, like, let's go for change. I mean, some of the changes I think are a bit tricksy. Yeah. But let's go for it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, just on that uh, point as well, um, with regards to some of the um, proposed changes, uh, Falkirk chairman uh, Dougie Henderson has again stated that he hopes next on the uh, agenda is the 16 team league. Uh, yeah. Well, I think anybody who wants, you know, who looks at the football is just sheer entertainment and get more teams in and say, yeah, 16 teams, the league's great. We're a 16 team, it's always going to fall down. It's like clubs who are getting to play, if Rangers come back up, if they're getting <coughs> Celtic and Rangers, uh, you know, three or four times a year, they're not going to vote to get them just home yeah. and away. I think I think the downfall of, of what you said is, I think you said there that uh, nobody wants to play each other four times mm. a year. Ask Dundee and Dundee United, ask Hearts and Hibs, ask Strangers and Celtic mm. if they want to play each other four times. Yeah, are we just, mm. I, I mean, is that the is that the deal breaker in this? We have to work out if it is 16, mm. then we have to work out a way that splits it to give them the four games. Absolutely, because any, I mean, everybody dances about it because, oh, no, no, no. But this is a business for all these guys. All these chief executives are businessmen. You know, they're trying to keep their clubs running and they know that it's best to play, I mean, best to play an eight Rangers uh, another twice rather than Falker or St Mirren or, you know, or Morton or whoever, you know, constitutes the, the uh, the four teams that, that are added to it. This is business sense. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, let's look at the uh, Champions League. Um, no Scottish clubs in it, which is <laughs> a disaster. Um, but there are English clubs, and for Manchester United, uh, you can spend a fortune and still not get into the, the next stage of it. Mm. Uh, and quite a few people, I think, are more than disgruntled with uh, Mr. Van Hal now. There's already a list of potential successors. Yeah, I think, I mean, we know that he's only got a year and a half to go anyway. Um, uh, there's some speculation coming out of England today that, that he wouldn't be sacked, but he might at one time walk. The big problem with Van Hal is that, that he's running out of excuses because, you know, he could say at first it wasn't his team, it's his team now. He could say, well, I haven't had much investment. He said two hundred and fifty million pounds to spend. Yeah. Is this a better team than the one Davy Moyes had? No, it's just not. It just isn't because the one that Davy Moyes had got to the quarterfinals of the uh, what I call the okay. European Cup. Yeah. Uh, and this team, this team, I, I'm surprised that some of the commentators said that Manchester United played quite well last night. I, I thought Wolfsburg were by far the superior team last night. Yeah, some of the goals that they lost well, as well, well, I thought were very, very poor. Yeah. Um, but, but would you would you stick with them? Would you Me personally, no, I just don't like the guy. No, I'm, so. <laughs> I'm okay, sorry. So it's a personal issue. No, I, just, no, I, just, yeah. I just don't like his attitude, mm. I don't like his arrogance, I don't like the way he looks at people. You know, there was a couple of guys, no, like there was photographs, there was a couple of guys, Man United fans, airing their feelings after the game as he was walking down the tunnel and the stare that he gave them was as if, hey, you can't mm. do that to me. I'm, I'm who I am, sort of a thing. That things yeah. like that, you know. Yeah, um, you've caught me on the hop there, Robbie. Really things like that, that, you know. And I just don't, don't I look just, at him. Don't look at him. No, you just, could lose a friend. I, I just feel that uh, he's not a person I would like to play for or be around about. Yeah. Okay. Mm. That's a player's perspective on yeah. you. Um, I just don't like the football his team plays. Mm. I don't think his team likes the football his team plays and I think that's crucial because all the stories you're getting out of this is these players are all saying we've always been taught to pass the ball forward we never, I said that we're passing and you can see the, the slow passing in midfield actually last night they were quite enterprising because they had to be they had to win the match no, they were enterprising and they lost mm -hmm. goals yep if you're not enterprising, mm. you're not losing goals, mm. you end up nothing each. Right. When you have to go and get goals, then you, the game opens up and you lose goals. And I thought, they could, have, I thought they could have lost yeah. a lot more last yeah. night. Yeah. Can their counterparts across the, the, the city win that Champions League? 
no. City. No, I don't think so. No. I, I don't think I don't think English football. I think uh, tonight will be an interesting one for all for all uh, uh, football lovers because we're going to see a Chelsea team who again don't seem to be playing for their manager, probably having to get at least a point to qualify. And we're going to see Arsenal might have to do something quite spectacular in in Greece, but you know we won by two goals. I don't think it's a strong league. It's a strong league financially, but when you see uh, German football at the top of Italian football and certainly the top of Spanish football, what are they doing with all this money? Yeah. Where is the quality here? I mean, is Manchester United just a quality compared to Wolfsburg? I don't think so. Yeah, uh, pretty embarrassing. Um, would you stick with Mourinho? Oh, that's a tough one. I I wouldn't know. I, I think no. I think there's now comes to, now comes to a, it's a push or shove thing where you say they are not. This team is not playing for this manager. What do I do? Uh, and I think even though it's going to cost upwards of ten million pounds to get rid of uh, Mourinho, that's a decent centre half left foot. And I think Abramovich might make the business decision that he's, he's better bringing somebody in. OK, uh, we've got a guy who doesn't like the way a manager looks <laughs> and one who's just bulleted one of the world's best managers. Uh, join Hugh McDonald next week on the programme. He'll give us such crackers <laughs> as going to geese a slug of your ginger <laughs> and can you get up the uh, shop and get the Wayne a cream egg. Uh, we'll have more of that next time. <laughs>